Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. We have a, uh, a quick uh, restoration today, but uh, something came up and uh, I'm doing some cleanup over here, putting some shelves, things like that. And um, something came up and I, I just, it's been irking me ever since I bought these tools and maybe uh, you can help me out and figure out what's going on here. So let's okay, check. Okay, years ago, I don't even, it's over 10 years ago or something, I bought these set of uh, Bondis. I don't know if you ever heard of these. These are... Uh, they're uh, a big producer of uh, Allen Keys and Allen Sets, you see, Bondus. And uh, this is a set, and it came um, uh, metric and standard. And uh, I bought this set, and, you know, I got it mail order when I got it. Uh, I didn't even realize it. But then I'm looking at the set, and I see that two of each set has reduced shank, reduced handles. And, and it, I can't tell you how much that annoys me because, believe it or not, four and five millimeter, and this one's five thirty second and three sixteenths. I use them quite a bit, and they don't have a full handle on it. And I always wondered, and maybe if uh, any of you out there have this same uh, problem or same thing that with this set, with why did Bondus, maybe there's a reason. I can't figure it out. Why would they reduce the shanks on these? for uh hex keys because it annoys the heck out of me i want a full if i you know i wanted a full t handle on my wrench and it can't be because torque or anything because the smaller ones have a full handle so if anybody out there knows please tell me because that just annoys the heck out of me and i'm ready to ditch these sets and get a full handle set okay today's project uh today we have i like these wrenches this is called an eagle's claw wrench and um i don't know if you ever seen one of these before and again we're getting a lot of these animal looking uh <laughs> animal looking tools but uh you can see the condition that this one's in looks like uh it was kind of left out or whatever that that's that rust that you see there doesn't look too pitted but it looks like something a fresh water rust which is better than a salt water rust and um we're going to clean this up and then we're going to talk about it, see uh, if we can do some research and see what the deal with these wrenches are. So let's get started. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see we have a um, little bit of pitting. Uh, this is important. The stamping isn't too deep over here, so I have to be very careful not to, uh, you know, to sand this off. But yet, you see this over here, that corrosion here? That's got to come off, but how do I get that without, you know, affecting that? So it's a little difficult. Some of these striations I won't be able to get rid of because it'll take out. But you can see now it says Eagle Claw Wrench and... Um, out of Rockford, Illinois, and February 6th, and I can't get that date. Uh, it says, it looks like a 12, February 6th, 12, maybe. So, anyway, we'll uh, we'll work on that, and um, you can see on the other side here, we got out all the rust, but now we have to make it, uh, there is a name here, and it's a, a Dasco. See that, Dasco? And over here... Uh, the handles look nice. I, I spent a lot of time with the wire brushing because a lot of this I didn't want to take uh, down too far. You know, I don't want to go with too aggress aggressive of a belt. They, these were extremely good steel, these Eagle Claw wrenches. They, and you could tell by when you bang them together. Listen. They were super hard forged and there's, you know, so you can get a lot off with the wire brush. Um, you have to be real careful when you're taking these apart because... I've seen a lot of these with these nuts broken. And uh, so I took extensive care, put a little bit of heat as you saw and tried different wrenches to get them off, but we're able to save it and we'll see how everything goes back on. So let's get to the, uh, to the sanding belt.
Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this wrench looked like before we started. And we are calling this wrench done. This one came out really nice. And um, this one was made by the Eagle Claw Wrench Company that was uh, around between uh, about 1910 to the mid-20s. And you can see here um, that the this is a number 302 model. Uh, they did make a lot of these plier wrenches, but uh, this is what they're most famous for. They did make other type of tools. And this one is uh, from a patented from 1912 and uh, probably produced right around that time also. Um, what's nice about these type of wrenches is the steel is just a high quality, superior steel. Um, and uh, they, they really did last a long time and, and were used for many different things. And how this wrench typically operated, again, it is like a plier wrench. Uh, you can open it up to different sizes. And if you wanted to, uh, you could see how that presses down on the item and gives you a really superior grip on uh, fasteners, different type of fasteners. And you had a, a good range of motion, of uh of latitude here between the widest opening and of course your narrow but this this was a formidable looking uh tip on here with these uh the gripping so that would also i guess if you had to grip some things or pull it apart but a very interesting wrench uh again eagle claw wrench company uh out of uh chicago and uh this was one of their flagship models and uh nice restoration nice wrench Hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.